When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. RowPaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coatings solution. Oh, I'll take this off the screen here. We will welcome you into the Matt Boucher Show. BJ Reigns here along with Matt Boucher. Why not? We'll leave it on the screen the whole show. Matt Boucher, the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. There's his contact info. Reach out to him for your uh, real estate needs moving forward. He's doing this on Christmas Eve. So, Matt, appreciate it. Appreciate folks for checking us out here. We got a few minutes. So we might keep it a little shorter than usual, but if folks have a, a question or a comment about that Washington State game the other night, let us have it here. And again, happy uh, Christmas Eve, early happy Merry Christmas to everybody watching this. But uh, we couldn't we couldn't skip it this week, Matt. I was driving back all day yesterday from uh, Spokane, and we had to find a few minutes to talk about this game because, uh, man, 6-0 and now since we've started the show. But Boise State goes up to Spokane, a huge win over Washington State. Uh, what are your thoughts, man? What, what a win. Quadrant one win. It was uh... – it wasn't pretty on the offensive end, but man, that's a big win. Six game winning streak going into conference and Tuesday um, is going to be a big one. Fresno State's 10 and three and they want to start, you know, with a big road win against us and we're going to have to protect our home court. Yeah, and they're, they're up they're up to 62 now in Ken Palm after their win. So we'll get to that in a minute. But man, you look at that Wazoo game, the first half, it was just such a struggle to score. It was Boise State had, I think, uh, nine points with like five minutes to go until halftime. But their defense kept them in it. You talked last week, Matt, about the Ken Palm numbers, and uh, they're actually up to number 19 now in the defensive efficiency at Ken Palm. The raw defensive efficiency, they're number 14 in the country. So, um, you know, effective field goal percentage, I think they're like top 25. So, I mean, it's a lot of these advanced metrics that most people don't know what they mean. But basically, Boise State right now has one of the top 25 defenses in all of college basketball. And that really kept them in the game, Matt. The Boise State's offense went six minutes and 11 seconds without scoring a point. Six minutes on the offense without scoring a point. And yet at the end of that run, they were only down nine points, 18 to nine. So the defense kept them in the game, Matt, and allowed that comeback in the second half. I think the the thing we really are going to need to focus on is obviously the offensive end. I mean, you play against some teams that get it going and you can't come back from that. I mean, we've started, I think, every game slow. We're really good at finishing the game strong. We've we've rattled off 12-2 runs, 14-2 runs, and then Washington State. I mean, we've we've ended the last, you know, 10 minutes of every game really good, which is encouraging, but I, we can't get behind the eight ball like that. Um, some of the glaring stats to me was our team had a total of four assists and 15 turnovers. And if you look at our average through the year, now we're only averaging 12 assists and 13 turnovers. So we have a, a negative assist to turnover ratio. You look at Gonzaga or Duke, you know, they're a one and a half to two ratio. Gonzaga's at 18 assists to 12 turnovers. Duke's at 18 assists to nine turnovers. So that's a ratio we really need to improve, um, not only taking care of the ball, but getting better assists. And the best assist for a three-point shooter is from right underneath the basket. You get into the sweet spot, you kick it out. It's just like your dad rebounding for you when you were a kid, and those will be the highest percentage shots. But obviously missing shots is going to hurt your assist number. But yeah. transition and easier shots um, is definitely going to increase that ratio. And that's the ratio I'm really going to be looking at when Mountain West play starts. Yeah, I was going to say, Leon Rice actually said earlier this year, it's hard to get assists when you don't score. When you don't make a basket, you can't get an assist. And in the first half, that was obviously a struggle. But yeah, the, the four assists was the second fewest in a win in the Leon Rice era. They had three in a win at Wyoming uh, last year uh, with, with no fans in the stands in the pandemic and won that one. But uh, to win a game with, with four assists, yeah, that's, you know, the offense certainly, Matt, is, I don't want to say it's a problem, but it's a concerning thing. But at this point, I don't know how much better it's going to get. I mean, I think that they're going to have to win ugly, so to speak, this season, and it, which they're doing. They're okay doing that because of the defensive numbers. So would you like to see some of the numbers, the three-point numbers? You know, they were only four of 16 from three in that game. Um, but – uh, the free throws were nice to see 18 of 21. And we've talked about that, you know, in a negative way, pretty much all season, Matt, but kind of like this, it was kind of like the St. Louis game, but just in, in terms of the free throws, pushing them over the top instead of costing them the game. And I know there were probably some Boise state fans nervous in the second half thinking, okay, this game's going to come down to free throws. And it did. And in the last minute and 11 seconds, Boise state went nine of 10 from the free throw line to seal this game. That's huge. I mean, that is huge. If you'd have told me we would have four assists, 15 turnovers, score 58 points, shoot 25% from three, I would have told you we lost by 25. Um, but that's encouraging. When you can win ugly games, it shows how tough you are and how great you are. And we hammered the boards and we got a lot of second chance opportunities. And those are games that are really going to pay off 
come March. I mean, is winning the ugly ones because once our offense gets rolling and I mean, the last four games, I mean, Key Jab's averaging almost 20. He's at 19 and a half. Tyson stepped up and Shaver. I mean, those three in the last uh, four to five games are, are combining for 50 points. So, I mean, we need to get it from other, you know, other people to get us to 70, 75 points a game instead of, you know, 50, 55. And I do want to talk about the defense in a minute, but while we talk about it, let's, let's watch some of the highlights from this game, Matt. Uh, you know, I thought this was really cool. There's Tyson Degenhardt, his family. You know, I had a, about 300 people there for him and uh, behind the bench, and he was pumping up the crowd when they announced his name. And um, this really was a fun atmosphere. They, they turned off the top level, so it looked and felt, you know, more packed. And I think they should be kind of doing that for some busy state games. But you look at that lower level, it was packed. There were fans for both teams. And there's Tyson finally getting a uh, – in the layup there but uh it was a fun atmosphere could you tell that on tv matt oh yeah it looked awesome um but we actually played against washington state at spokane arena when i was in college and it was electric i mean it's basically a home game for washington state they're going to say it's not here comes the big three i'm sorry to cut you off there's tyson degenhart with the big three two Huge minutes to go right that there. put boise state up and that was that was the play of the game there to put him up from uh, you know, Washington State had just scored, Matt, and there was a lot of back and forth threes, and Degenhardt had that huge three to put him up four. That was huge for him to have the confidence to step up and knock it down was huge, and especially he was struggling a little bit offensively. Um, so that was a that was a really big shot. I love when they get the crowd going. You see after the game there, all the fans, and then we have a shot, I think, here of Tyson Degenhardt hugging his family and his parents and all the people in the front row. I mean, there literally were like 300 people to Matt to, to see uh, Tyson Degenhardt. So, that is amazing. Um, that that's pretty cool. He's giving the whole crowd. And I want to play the beginning of this again because it's hard to see. But if you look here, when they call his name and announce him, he turns around and starts pumping up the crowd, trying to get everybody fired up. Um, that was just really cool. And, and that three, Matt, I want to play this again because uh, let's go back a little further. One of the things uh, that Leon Rice, people say is, the oh, you know, he doesn't run set plays enough. And when they need a basket, he doesn't, you know, get in there and, and run a play. But you look at this play right here. They ran a set play to get Tyson a three in a key spot. And you can see him at the top of the key and he comes off of a screen and pops out. And this was a, a huge play in the game. That was huge. And then you got Maladin. Maladin's diving straight to the hoop, where if you, if you cheat out on Degenhart, you got a dunk for Maladin. Great play call. The other great play calls that nobody's going to talk about that I watched is the out of bounds. You throw it to Key Jab on the right elbow, you spread the court, and he goes straight at the hip of the defender, and you can't guard him. I mean, he's almost unguardable. And that was four points right there. I think he drew a, a flagrant foul that got Rodman yep. out of the game. And yep. I mean, that was a simple, simple, it seemed simple to the fan, but that was very, very well executed, the spacing, and then to let him just go right at the hip and get to the free throw line. Yeah, Dennis Rodman's uh, kid, DJ Rodman, fouled out of the game and did not score. So that, that's got to be pretty hard to do, actually. He played 21 minutes, did have uh, four rebounds, but uh, fouled out of the game. And uh, yeah, he wasn't much of a contributor, but they were hitting some threes, especially in the second half when the game got going a little bit. Boise State was down by five at halftime. As we said, a back and forth game. I thought Marcus Shaver Jr. had a huge kind of step back three at the top of the key that tied the game at one point. And then, yeah, you mentioned key jab. That kind of became their offense later in the game was to get him the ball and let him kind of just get to the rim. He was nine for 11 from the foul line. So I think in that uh, St. Louis game, he was like five for 11 or something and basically cost them that game you know, is what he was saying. And so uh, he comes back nine of 11 from the line uh himself and as you said he hit two and then on an inbounds they, they got the ball back and there was a uh flagrant foul he hit those two they got the ball back and fouled again he made like six free throws himself in the final like 45 seconds or something and um it, it just seems like they're making winning plays right now matt we, you know we, we've talked about this before but at times uh, maybe one of the things in, in previous years have been late in games, not being able to make that play and, you know, being right there with three or four minutes to go and the other team kind of going on that last run. But we're now seeing Boise State numerous times this season in the last three, four minutes when the game's tight, locking down on D and making a couple big buckets. And as I said, you had, you know, Degenhardt had a couple. He had another big kind of post up, spin around, kind of one handed shot with like three minutes left before he hit that three. I mentioned Shaver's three. I thought Najee Smith played really well, too. No one's talking much about him. Yep. He's also from Spokane, coming back home. He had a couple big buckets in the second half. I think all six of his points were in the second half, and he had a huge putback on a tip-in that, that was a big play. So I, I thought um, they got some contributions from a lot of different guys in this game. 
And I think the difference is the chemistry. I think uh, Leon referred to it in the post game, but the chemistry is good. They're smiling, they're laughing, they're having fun. And, and, you know, when that normally happens, you're typically playing better and winning. And I don't even think we're even scratching the surface. That's what's, that's what's so encouraging is we're getting better every week, the last three and a half weeks or so since we started the show. I mean, every week they're getting better. And I think the sky's the limit. You, we, uh, I know we both kind of look at the Ken Palm numbers and all that. And we kind of spin this forward here. First of all, for how, how nice is it when you're a player to go into like a little Christmas break here with a win? How, how much different would these three days have been with the six game winning streak versus uh, losing that game? I mean, one or two games is is a world of difference. You talk, we lose that game. Now we're eight and four, and, or instead of nine and four, we're eight and five, and we're going in, you know, on a loss. And now, I mean, your six game winning streak, we have not lost in the month of December. And we're not playing up to our potential. I mean, that's very encouraging. And Tuesday night is going to be fun. It'll give us a, the opportunity to go undefeated in December. I don't know if Boise State's ever gone undefeated in the month of December before, but a 7-0. And we, our strength of schedule, I mean, Fresno's coming in at 10-3, and but our strength of schedule is way – I mean, we're 100 spots, I think, on the Ken Palm, tougher strength of schedule than they are. Um, so I think our – you know, the some of the teams we've played that – Fresno State hasn't played is going to prepare us really good for Tuesday night. Yeah, I mean, you look at this Mountain West this year, Matt. I mean, and, and I, I just put it on Twitter a little while ago with the first five games for Mountain West play. You got Fresno State coming in. They're 62nd in Ken Palm. Let's not forget, someone thinks, oh, 60 seconds, 77. There's 358 Division One teams. You're, if you're in the top 100 or even in the top 150, that's a quality team. You're in the upper half of college basketball teams around the country. And if you're certainly in the 40, 50, 60, 70 range, you're one of the you know top – 30 25 percent of teams in the country and that's a that's a that's a you know a quality game and so fresno state comes in uh 62nd on tuesday to start conference play i think boise state owes them one for that game last year if you remember that game abu kijab oh, yeah. got hurt that was the game that the mountain west rescheduled at the last minute and uh you know they, that basically may have been the game that kept boise state out of the ncaa tournament last year so i think they might have a little extra motivation because you got pretty much the whole team back except for tyson and and some of those guys, but the freshmen that aren't playing much. So it's the same players coming back that remember that feeling of having to go to the NIT because of that game where last year Fresno was not nearly as good as they are this year. So they got one of the best big men in the league in Orlando Robinson. But I, I think that uh, revenge factor might, might, might help Boise State in this one, Matt. I think so, too. I mean, it's going to sting. And, you know, the guys who were here last year, that's going to be some extra whiteboard material. It, it very well could have cost them a chance at the NCAA tournament last year. And it's a game that – in my opinion, shouldn't have been made up when it was made up, but um, a fake, a, a false positive COVID test resulted in that. But it is what it is, and that's the that's the actually you know really disappointing part that the game should have been played as it was. The test wasn't even a, a positive test. But you got Fresno State who's sixty second. Then you go you know on a really tough stretch. You go to Wyoming who's uh, they're 101, which again, 101 is still top third of college basketball. But you're also going to Laramie, Wyoming on New Year's Day on the in, two o'clock in the afternoon. As it, it's a really tough place to play in Laramie. And so that's a really sneaky game. Even if even if Wyoming was 250 in Ken Palm, that would be a, a sneaky, tough game. So that's going to be a really tough game going to Wyoming. I think Ken Palm only favors them by one point to win. So I mean, that, that is certainly going to be a tough game. And then they, they, they have another road game right after that on, on, on uh, Tuesday the 4th against Utah State who's playing well, and they're ranked 56th at Ken Palm. So your first three games are home to Fresno, and then at Wyoming and at Utah State. And then, oh, let's keep it going. You have Colorado State coming in, who's undefeated, uh, thir number 35 at Ken Palm right now. I think they're like number 20 in the AP poll. They're on a COVID pause right now, but should be hopefully back by then. And that's going to be a huge Friday night game at Extra Mile Arena. You'd hope to have it be one of those big, loud crowds. And then, oh, yeah, a couple days later, you get to go to Nevada, who's 77th at Ken Palm. So your first five games – the Ken Palm numbers are 62, 101, 56, 35, and 77. Right out of the gate, you get potentially two quad one games, two quad two games. Um, this is a big-time opportunity potentially, and I don't want to say it's going to make or break the season. There is a stretch in the middle where there's a lot of winnable games, Matt. This is kind of the first five and the last five are pretty tough for this team and are going to really determine – um, how they do, but you know, nine and four, they certainly held their own in non-conference play. You'd like to have the Bakersfield game back. Certainly the St. Louis game you'd like to have back, but nine and four with a couple of the wins they have is certainly a respectable uh, record. And you put yourself at least with a puncher's chance to, to have a shot to, to, to do some things in conference play and that the slate starts clean. And uh, again, these first five, you know, games, these next two weeks after Christmas here, I think are going to decide a lot about this team in this season. Yeah, this might be the best Mountain West we've seen in, in many years. Um, 
And it's not just one or two teams at the top. You know, there's five or six teams that are really, really good this year. And you just got to go one and oh, you can't look ahead saying you got the toughest five game start we've ever had, which is true. Uh, but you got to protect the home court on Tuesday, one and oh, and then they know 7,500 feet of, above elevation in Wyoming. That's going to be a brutal one. But um, the good news is it'll be on New Year's Day and I bet there'll be no there won't be very many fans in the stands at Wyoming. So uh, students will be gone. So hopefully that works to our advantage a little bit. That is a big one, and it's going to be the same way. And Fr when Fresno comes here, there probably won't be a lot of students next Tuesday, but hopefully the, the rest of the crowd will come in. But, man, uh, you're right, man. There's not too many gimmies on the schedule this year. When even San Jose State's winning some games, and you look at all these teams uh, on the schedule and what they're doing um, in the first five road games for Boise State in conference, Wyoming, Utah State, Nevada, San Diego State, and at Fresno, uh, all before January is done on the road. I mean, this is going to be a – uh, a war of attrition, I think. I don't think the league champ's going to be like, you know, 8, 17 and 1 or something. I think you could lose four or five no. games and maybe be the league champ. And so, um, and if you win the Mountain West this year with all these teams, if you're the regular season champion, you're probably getting in the NCAA tournament. So I think there's sure. still a path. There's still a path for an at large bid for Boise State. Some fans might laugh at that and say that's crazy. Um, they lost to Bakersfield, and certainly the Bakersfield game is going to hurt them. But with all the talent in the league this year, if you win the league, and again, I I don't. I mean, Colorado State's good, but I'm not going to say they're unbeatable. I mean, there's there doesn't there's not that top five Martin Twins, you know, Nevada team or that San no. Diego State team that was ranked fifth. There's no like just super dominant team that you go into the game thinking you have no chance to win. So conference play starts. It's a clean slate, so to speak. Even though Boise State is happy to carry the six game momentum into this, and so I think it's anybody's game. And if you can get off to a hot start here and win some of these games, I think they have a chance. Yeah, I, I agree with you. If somebody goes 15 and three in the Mountain West, I'll be shocked. I think a 14 and four probably wins it this year, maybe even a 13 and five with the tie. But if somebody goes 16 and two, I'll be, I'll be shocked with some of the, some of the teams in the road games, everybody's gonna have to face. Well, it should be fun, Matt. Appreciate you uh, for doing this on Christmas Eve. And it, uh, it's a, a you know fun time to be a Boise State uh, sports fan right now. You got the bowl game coming up next week. You got the Fresno State game next week, six wins in a row. And I know let's just keep saying it. There's six and oh, since we started the show. So I know six and oh, baby. At some we need point, the we got to start. It's not the players. It's not Coach Rice. It's not the, all the film study they're doing. It's us starting this show. I think it's as simple as that. Absolutely. So we'll and we need everybody. Away. If you're not using your tickets on Tuesday, give them away. We need fans in the stands. It's it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal on Tuesday, Fresno State. You really want to get off to a nice nice uh, run to conference play. Get that win. Get seven in a row. Get on the positive side in conference play and kind of play from ahead, so to speak, than having to play uphill. If you lose that Fresno game with all of a sudden road trips to Wyoming and, and Utah State coming up, that's a pretty daunting uh, position to be in. So Seven uh, wins in a row. We're not even thinking that way. Merry Christmas to everybody out there and, and uh, Merry Christmas Eve. Matt, appreciate you for doing this. Hope folks after the take a couple of days for the holidays, but then reach out to Matt and his team at Boucher Real Estate. Uh, and, and if you're looking to buy or sell a home and uh, Matt and his staff can take care of you and appreciate you guys checking this out. Have a great Christmas and we will talk to you uh, Tuesday. Tuesday is a busy day. The football team leaves for the bowl game. So I actually will be in football at the football game in uh, Tucson. Uh, maybe we can get Matt to do like the post game show for us or something from press row at the Fresno game. Let's figure something out. Here if we, uh, we, we may need to, we may need to talk off air. I just thought of that while we were uh, thinking, cause I'm short on folks at the Fresno game. So, um, but a big there. day Tuesday, we'll have a, some sort of post game show with football recap of them arriving and the basketball game against Fresno and a lot of stuff happening at BroncoNationNews.com. So thanks to Matt. Thank you guys for watching. And we will talk to you later. Bronco Nation. Merry News. Christmas, everybody. BroncoNationNews.com. That's right. Merry Christmas folks.